Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is the multi sphere trace for objects node. We run our quick little example here. We have our multi sphere trace for objects node to our left. And we will note that it's firing off from here. It's doing the line trace forward. The wall is colliding with it. And then this secondary wall behind it is colliding as well. If we open up our node, we can find the multi sphere trace for objects node right here. Now I have covered the sphere trace for objects node, which is basically going to be the same thing with one small difference. For individual information about the bottom parts of this node, please refer to the original sphere trace for objects video. So to get into the differences, basically, our sphere trace for objects does a sphere trace looking for an object type. And if anything is within the sphere trace itself, it returns back a hit value, a hit result, a single one. The multi one doesn't fire out multiple spheres and trace them. It still does the one, but it returns back everything it hits. And that's something that is super duper important. Let's get rid of this stupid value that is there for no reason. And let's finish up. So how I have this set up is we're firing off from our start point, which is the origin of the sphere. And I'm going a thousand units forward. I'm telling it to look for any of the object with the type world static and then return back the results. And then we're also going to take this node and we're going to say, okay, well, how many are we hitting? We're going to take the length of our array and plug it into our print node and hook that up and clean it up. There we go. I'll move that down. And now we should get back a result of two. We're hitting this first wall, which is set to static, and the second wall, which is set to static. If we were to go into our object types, and add, let's say, for example, pawn and hit play. Now we have two, three, four different values depending on how many parts of myself I hit. I have two collision parts on this pawn itself. So that's why, depending on if you're hitting the collision volume, it's one, or the collision volume in the player itself, it's two. And of course, we're getting four or two because I'm checking for both of the types of objects. That's pretty much going to be what the multi sphere trace for objects node does. It's just going to take what the normal sphere trace does and give you back all the hits instead of just the first one. It's useful if you wanted to use object types for a determiner for your sphere trace rather than a visible type or a um, the channel type. It's really easy to go into your project settings, collision, and you have 18 custom object channels. You might want to make an object type for player, maybe destructible, enemy, projectile, things like that. A good, let's say, let's go with projectile. Let's say we make an object type for projectile and the player has a special ability that they fire off. They just hold their hand up and they fire it off and it destroys every projectile that's in a radius. So we, they'd fire it off. We make our start and our ending point similar. This is important. If you want to do a radius around yourself, for example, or around your starting point, your end point must be slightly different. So in this case, I'm just going to take the start and add point one. And if I hit play, we see a sphere around here with nothing hitting. And if I walk into it, we're getting hit results from my player. So we could do a sphere trace around our starting and slightly different endpoint of whatever radius we want. Tell it the object type to look for would be our projectile. And then for everything on our hit, we would do a destroying, maybe a particle effect or something like that. And you have a nice little effect where it just it pulses out basically and it checks and then it destroys anything that it hits. That is going to wrap up our multi-sphere trace for objects node.